What's up YouTube, Saf here on Super Saf TV and this is my Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus review two months later. Now I actually got hold of the S9 Plus early and since getting it, it has been my daily driver for the most part. And in this video, I'm gonna be covering my experience. So I'm not gonna be going over specs and things like that. Uh, you can check that out in some of my previous videos, in particular my unboxing. In this video, I'm simply gonna be telling you what I like about the S9 Plus, what I don't like about it, and what I think can be improved. Right, so let's get straight to it. Now, spoiler alert, I really do like the S9 Plus. As you guys probably may have noticed, from some of my social media posts over the past couple of months. And there's lots of reasons for that. Firstly, I know a lot of you guys are gonna say, hey, the S9 Plus looks just like the Samsung Galaxy S8 Plus. And yeah, that's actually true. If you look at the S8 Plus and the S9 Plus next to each other, from the front, you're probably not gonna even be able to tell the difference. Now, I've said this before a few times, but this is not a bad thing because the S8 Plus is still one of the best looking phones out there right now. The dual curved symmetrical glass panels are still unmatched. And because of this, the S9 Plus, as with the S8 Plus, looks absolutely beautiful in my opinion. There's still a metal frame, which is apparently more durable compared to last year. There's IP68 water and dust resistance, and there's no real camera bump. This is something that we have on so many other devices, so I'm glad the S9 Plus doesn't have it. I'm also digging the two new colors this year, the coral blue as well as the lilac purple. Now, as with all glass back phones, although they feel really premium, they are quite slippery in the hand and they do attract a lot of fingerprints. So for that reason, I would definitely recommend picking up a D-brand skin. Uh, I've currently got the matte black one here on my black S9 Plus and I really like the stealthy look. There's also the black camo, which I really like. And if you do wanna pick up a skin for your device, uh, then I will be leaving a link to our channel sponsored D-brand in the description below. Now, another thing that I really like about the S9 Plus is that display. And in my opinion, the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus has the best smartphone display in the market right now. We've got super AMOLED technology with a quad HD plus resolution. So things are very sharp. The blacks are very deep, colors are vibrant. And you've also got great viewing angles. So you're not gonna be getting any color shifting. And this display gets very, very bright. So if you are outdoors in sunlight, you shouldn't have a problem with this either. And on top of that, we've got minimal bezels, actually slightly smaller compared to last year. And guess what? There's no notch. Now I've said this before, but I don't hugely mind the notch, but I also don't like how it's becoming a bit of a trend these days with pretty much all new flagships. And with the S9 Plus, I think it's probably one of the only flagships out this year that doesn't have a notch. Now, why am I talking so much about the display? Well, the thing with the display is it's very, very important, especially to me. Uh, it is what you're gonna be looking at whenever you're using a smartphone. You're gonna be staring at a display and it needs to be a good, and this is definitely the case. Samsung makes some of the best displays in the market, and I have a feeling that they save the best displays for their own flagships, and it definitely seems to be the case with the S9 Plus. All right, moving on, I still love the fact that we've got expandable storage as well as a 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. This is so, so awesome. Two of these things we're seeing so less of these days, especially the 3.5 millimeter headphone jack. And me personally, I still think it's very important. Uh, I'm somebody who travels a lot, and a lot of the times uh, I will forget a dongle or forget some headphones, so I have to kind of use whatever headphones I can find. And having that 3.5 millimeter headphone jack is so, so important. The S9 Plus is also very, very fast, which I really like. It's been very smooth in my experience. Uh, you can get two versions of the S9 Plus, and this is gonna vary depending on your region. You've got either the Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 version or the Samsung Exynos 9810 version. And I've actually done a detailed speed comparison between these two, which you can check out in the cards and in the description below. But realistically speaking, both of these are some of the fastest processes out there right now. And I don't really think you can go wrong with either of these. I also like the fact that we've now got 60 bytes of RAM here on the S9 Plus compared to four last year. If you do get the S9, however, that's still gonna have four gigabytes of RAM. Now, one of the things that I notice about new devices within the first couple of months are app crashes, and the S9 Plus has been no exception. I have had a few app crashes, but this is usually the case uh, because a lot of apps are not fully optimized for the newer processors. But with time, these should clear. And once again, I don't think you're gonna have much of a problem in terms of speed and performance with the S9 Plus. Now, two of the things that I fed back on last year with the S8 Plus, first thing was the single bottom firing speaker, which was okay, but not great. 
And secondly, it was that fingerprint scanner, which was in a very awkward position near the camera. Thankfully, this feedback has been taken on board and both of these things have now been improved. We've got stereo speakers. Uh, there's one in the earpiece and one button firing. And the speakers do support Dolby Atmos. In my opinion, they sound absolutely great. It makes the viewing experience, especially on this display, absolutely awesome. And the fingerprint scanner, now it's in a much more reachable position. Uh, you can just tap it super fast. It is, however, still very close to the cameras. And I have found myself occasionally smudging the secondary camera uh, when trying to find the fingerprint scanner. Uh, I do wish it was slightly more spaced out, but uh, the fingerprint scanner is likely to be embedded within the display for maybe the next version. Rumors are currently pointing towards the Samsung Galaxy Note 9 to have an embedded fingerprint scanner within the display. Now, regardless, if you don't want to use the fingerprint scanner in the back, you still have lots of other options. Uh, you can use the iris scanner, you can use facial recognition, or you can use a combination of both, which is intelligent scan. Now, in my experience, all of these work really well, and I've actually done a detailed comparison of intelligent scan versus face ID on the iPhone 10. Uh, that video will once again be linked in the cards and in the description below if you wanna check it out. Personally speaking, I do prefer the fingerprint scanner, and that is always my choice, uh, but I do like the fact that there's lots of different options, so you can use what you like. Right now, let's talk about the cameras. The cameras are probably one of the biggest improvements to what we had last year. The S9 Plus has a dual camera setup this time, and it's definitely one of the best smartphone cameras out right now. Dynamic range has been improved compared to last year, and the camera interface as well is so much better. Yes, it's very similar to what we have on the iPhone now. I know a lot of you guys are gonna say that, but I've always liked the simplicity of the iPhone camera app. And uh, now I like that you can just swipe from left to right and you can switch between the modes uh, rather than having to go into settings each time. And in terms of low light, the S9 Plus is one of the best low light shooters as well. And that's because of the wide F1.5 aperture. You do have a dual aperture on this and it's gonna switch between F2.4 and F1.5. I've actually done another video uh, detailing this and that's gonna be linked in the cards once again. I know I'm linking to a lot of videos, but those will cover things in a bit more depth rather than me going on and on in this video. I know this video is already gonna be very, very long. Now, a new feature on the camera as well this year is super slow-mo. That's 960 frames a second at 720p. This, however, is a short burst. It's literally like 0.2 seconds. So it's like, boom, and that's it. And then that's gonna slow it down to around six seconds. Now, my problem with super slow-mo on smartphones has always been the fact that it's practically impossible to capture the right moment because you need to press it. And unless you're some sort of ninja, you're not gonna be able to press it at the exact time. And this would result in you having to try like five or 10 times. And I personally would just give up. And I just stopped using super slow-mo on other devices like the Xperia XZ1. But what I think Samsung have implemented on the super slow-mo feature is absolutely great. And that is automatic motion detection. This is a small square which you can place in your frame. And as soon as the S9 Plus uh, notices motion in that square, it's gonna start recording that burst of slow motion. This makes it so much easier to capture slow motion. Now, if you're not into 960 frames a second on all of this, then you can record at 240 frames a second at 1080p. Uh, this works great, and then you can slow it down later on. So I actually found myself using this a few times as well, depending on the scene that I was shooting. But overall, it is definitely great. We also have live focus on the rear-facing cameras now that we have two cameras. And it works pretty well overall. Uh, the edge detection is very, very good. And I do like the angle of view as well. Uh, one of the problems that I find with live focus is that it doesn't seem to have HDR. So if you're in a situation with tricky dynamic range, I do find that it does blow out the highlights. Uh, this is something that I hope Samsung can improve with the software update. So we do get HDR on live focus. Now let's talk about the front facing camera. This is something that I find not many people talk about in general, but selfies are very important. I think a lot of people that I know take a lot of selfies. And the front facing camera on the S9 Plus is good overall, but it really hasn't been improved in my opinion much compared to the S8 Plus. It's still wide for images and the dynamic range is a bit better. And I still think this is the best vlogging camera because it does have great stabilization from the front facing camera. Although it does crop in quite a bit to achieve that stabilization, uh, it'd be nice if Samsung could figure out a way to give us that stabilization without cropping in so much. But when it comes to images in general, uh, they're pretty good, but I don't think they're mind blowing in any way. You do have live focus now, which is gonna give you that sort of 
fake blur in the background to give you some better portrait selfies. But in my experience, this hasn't been great. It does a decent job. It doesn't work with sunglasses in most occasions. Yes, I know not everybody wears sunglasses 90% of the time like I do, but it's just something that you know other devices can do. So uh, I'm not sure why the S9 Plus can't do it. And also with selfie focus, it only takes one shot with the blurred background. So if it messes up and it you know kind of doesn't do a great job, then that's your selfie gone. It doesn't take a regular you know plain selfie as well as the blurred background version uh, like lots of other devices do so if you do mess up the selfie focus then that's that selfie gone and for that reason I found myself not using it much now a new feature that I'm not too fond of on the S9 plus is AR emoji this is basically a character that it's gonna make based on your appearance now I said this before but to me this will seem like a feature that you'd probably use for a few days and then never come back to again and this has been the case. It was also the case for me with an emoji on the iPhone 10. But I'd say the bigger problem with AR emoji is that it looks nothing like me. And that's because it doesn't support a beard and it doesn't support sunglasses. I mean, those are my two key selling points. Samsung, what are you doing? Uh, without the beard and the sunglasses, I'm just saff. I'm not super saff. But anyway, I mean, it, it's, it is mainly the beard. Uh, without the beard, the AR emoji looks nothing like me. So I just didn't use it because if I did send it to somebody, they'd be like, who is that? Also, the face tracking isn't great. I do think that the iPhone 10 has better face tracking on an emoji compared to AR emoji on the S9 Plus. Moving on to the battery, we've got the same size battery as what we had last year. And honestly speaking, I was expecting it to perform better because of the newer processors. I was expecting them to be more efficient, but I've not really seen an improvement in battery life. I'm getting roughly about the same battery life in my experience uh, compared to what I had last year with the S8 Plus. Now, this isn't bad by any means. It's pretty good. Uh, we're talking around four to five hours of on-screen time, but it was really something that I was hoping to be improved for a heavy user like me. Uh, for most users, I think you're gonna be absolutely fine, but if you are a heavy user, you are gonna need a top up throughout the day. And the good thing is you still have fast charging and the fast charger comes out of the box unlike other devices. So you can get that quick top up whenever needed. And this is something that I really, really appreciate. You've also got fast wireless charging, which is great. So if you've got a wireless charging pad on your desk or on your bedside table, it's so easy just to drop your phone on there rather than having to find the cable and connect it. Uh, and I really do like this feature. Now we do have Android Oreo with the Samsung Experience on top. I actually like the Samsung Experience skin. And I also like Bixby. I know there's lots of people with mixed opinions about Bixby. I've covered Bixby voice in detail in a previous video. That's also gonna be linked in the cards. And I do find it quite useful uh, to perform actions deep within apps. But the problem that you might face in a few months time is that as soon as we have the new Android version out, uh, it's gonna be a good few months before you get it on the S9 Plus. And I'm talking like it could be like six months, which is a very long time. Now I know this isn't all Samsung's fault and it is because of how Android's built and hopefully that will improve over time. We should be getting updates quicker on all Android devices. But currently speaking, based on my experience on the S8 Plus, uh, you could be waiting a long time for those updates. And if you are somebody who wants the latest and greatest updates, then this is something that unfortunately you're not gonna be getting with the S9 Plus, uh, something to bear in mind. Touching on the price, you are gonna be paying more for the S9 Plus compared to last year. In the UK, it actually starts at 128 gigabytes, not the 64, so you're looking at 870 pounds, which is the same price that the Note 8 came out at. And in the US, I think it starts at around $820, uh, which is quite steep, but when you compare it to the 1,000 pounds or 1,000 dollars of the iPhone 10, uh, it is quite reasonable because you are getting quite a few more features. So to conclude, what are my overall thoughts of the S9 Plus? Well, I am personally gonna be using this going forward as my daily driver, as I have been for the past couple of months. And that's because the S9 Plus, in my opinion, is the best all around flagship phone that you can buy right now. What do I mean by that? Well, it ticks all of the boxes. I think Samsung has spent a lot of time uh, to make sure that it covers all bases. We've got great cameras, we've got the best display in the market, we've got a great build and design, we've got water and dust resistance, we've got stereo speakers, we've got a fingerprint scanner, we've got an iris scanner, uh, we've uh, got a 3.5 meter headphone jack, expandable storage, fast charging, fast wireless charging, all of these things are here. And I don't think there's many flagship devices out right now which cover all of those bases. Are there things that can be improved? Of course, but if you are after an all round great device, 
then the S9 Plus is a great option and I can definitely recommend it. What do you guys think of the Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus? Definitely drop me a comment below and let me know your thoughts. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it useful. If you did, then do hit that thumbs up button for me. If you want to see more content like this, then be sure to subscribe and switch on notifications if you haven't already. This is Saf on Super Saf TV. And I'll see you next time.